Eddie always had the classic Eddie Bravo story is when he went to Germany with Rogan. Oh, yeah. And he fucking woke yeah. up in the middle of the night and realized he was late. Break it down, Eddie. Man, that Ger I love there's, this. There's, there's, there's so much to that Germany story. Joe wrote a blog about it. It was so crazy. Joe wrote it because he was fucking mad at me. Oh, what man. What year was this? This is he like was smoking already. 2007, yes. 2008. I think it was the first time. It was the first time the UFC went to Germany, and it was uh, Cologne, Germany. And um, man, uh, it, it, after the UFC, which is a Saturday night there, generally Sunday morning is the flight home. Right. And when we're overseas. I like because we went to England a bunch of times and we would do this in, at England in England after the UFC don't go to sleep party all night right until you, you know and then when you get on that plane the next morning you pass Just out sleep for fucking 10 hours didn't you wake up you're in LA it's the perfect system right it sucks <clears throat> being awake you know on a 10 hour flight. oh it's the worst then, dude it's torture so um, you you want to stay up and party just so that you could just sleep through that flight. So I party all goddamn night. Joe didn't come out, but I went out. I don't know who the fuck I was with. It was it was an insane night in Cologne, Germany, and I. But they say Germany is amazing. I I got back to the hotel um, probably seven in the morning or something, and. Um, our car, me and Joe's car, it was Joe's car, and I'm just like tagging along with Joe, you know what I mean? It's right, his car. Right, right, right. It was picking us up like at nine. I get back at seven, right? I walk in to the hotel, and I'm a zombie. I'm completely out. I'm completely out. I don't, I don't remember any of this. This is just, I must have been, because Joe saw me. Joe saw me. He was in the lobby, and he's like, and um, I went up to my room. I tried to pack, I guess. You know, and I have a certain way of packing. I, you know, everyone's got a little system, right? right. In my backpack, my laptop, right? And yeah, I got my my toiletries in my backpack, and in my <clears throat> in my suitcase, got all my clothes and, and just basically all my clothes. Right. right. So I don't remember. I don't remember getting back to the hotel. I don't. Remember, you go? I don't remember. I don't remember Joe saying we're leaving in two hours. I don't remember any. You of just that. went hard. You know what? I, what I remember. All I remember is. It's black and it's like, mm, mm, <laughs> and then my phone's going off. Mm, my phone's going off, and I wake up and I'm in the back seat of some car, going like a on the autobahn, racing to the airport, and I don't know what the where the fuck I'm at. And I look at my phone and it says Joe Rogan on it. It said actually Joahuash. <laughs> That's what it said. So <laughs> it says Joahuash. And I'm like, and I answered it. And he said, where the fuck are you? You took my car. And I'm like, boom. And I hung up and I'm like, what? and I, and I asked oh the driver, my I, asked, God. I asked the driver, I go, where the fuck are we going? He turns back and goes, we're going to the airport. I'm like, fuck. And then Joe calls again. I'm like, fuck. And I just send it to voicemail. I'm like, holy shit. I didn't, and then I opened up my backpack. My one shoe is in my backpack. No laptop, just one shoe. And my and then I open up the suitcase, and my laptop is in the fucking suitcase. So I feel I'm like, oh my god, what the, where the fuck? Yeah, am I? dude, I've had those. And then nights. Joe called again and goes, dude, you took my car, and I don't remember anything. So I must have just tried to pack like in a in a, yeah. in, in a zombie state. Yeah, I I packed in a zombie state and I went out, and that driver must have said Joe Rogan. And I must have said, yes. And he goes, jump running. And he just put me in the car and we drove away. And then, you know, I don't remember any of that. I came to life. It's like the beginning of a movie. Like, you know, just black. And, and then you hear a phone. And all of a sudden, boom, my eyes open. You're like, and reality. It's Joe Rogan trying to call me. I have no, I have no rec. I, the last thing I remember, I'm doing shots at some bar in Germany. I don't remember getting home. I don't remember going to the hotel, packing, and then getting in the car. I woke up in the backseat of some fucking car on the Autobahn, racing to the airport. So I get to the airport, right? So Joe takes a taxi. He jumps in a taxi, <laughs> and he is so mad at me at oh, the airport. Yeah. He would not talk to me. He didn't talk to me the whole time at the airport. 
all the the whole flight back we're sitting next to each other like first class and he didn't say a word to me and he was mad probably for about a week and then he wrote a blog and then he realized okay you know it's over we should he should kind of like you know laugh about it so then it became a joke to him but he was fucking furious dude but there's a blog somewhere on on the internet i i don't you know, know. that 70s show they used to sit right. in a garage and smoke weed, weed but they would never show it but you'd see the smoke right yeah and no, they'd, no, no. They'd be i'm talking, talking about two, like a real show three fucking a man show today would have to have reefer and you'd blow up the tv people would be pissed it's the end of television, but a cable network is eventually going to do it. Sci-fi. They eventually, you know, eventually they worked uh, like uh, Will and Grace. They brought in like gay characters and stuff. So eventually the, the stoners are going to make it. If the gay guys got through, the stoners are coming for sure. Just going to take time. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't understand how they don't have a No a respect sitcom. for stoners. Has, has any sitcom put a weed store in their rotation except Sons of Anarchy? Not that I know. The guy owned the weed store. They well, you know what? That was that show Weeds. What about that one? But that went somewhere different. That got terrible. Yeah, it got crazy. Crazy yeah. bad. That was a show that could have been on for 20 fucking years. Two suburban moms selling weed from their fucking house. Season seven, they could have bought a weed store and gone legal. They could have done it. No, there was Mexicans and fucking people having kids. What the fuck are we doing here? I want to see a show about two bitches selling weeds and the struggle of being single moms. You know, meeting fucking people in alleys with a gun and shit. And you know me, dog. I want to see some <laughs> fucking two white chicks. I want to see a chick with a tattoo who has a boyfriend who's a trucker who beats her. And she's selling pounds of weed to get away with it. You know what I'm saying? Like making 100000 a fucking year, selling pounds of weed online or whatever the fuck. Something interesting. Something that's really going on. I'm not on. the smartest person alive right now, but man, at 30, thinking about, thinking about where I was at mentally, I was dumb as shit. Uh, I didn't know fucking anything. I was so off on so much. So much, man. I was, um, I was brainwashed by MTV, man. And I, now looking... I'm just realizing this over the last couple of years, like, holy shit, I was completely programmed by MTV and, and music. You know, I, I was chasing the mansion with all the girls and the Ferraris and all that shit my whole life. I was chasing that. I thought, okay, I'm going to make, I'm going to do it. You got to have uh, mot motivation, enthusiasm. You got to keep going. You got to have good work ethic. You got to keep working. You got to move to Hollywood, make the music, be around all the record labels going to get signed, going to blow up, going to sell out arenas. It's going to, you know, that was, I 100% believe that was going to happen, you know, my, most of my life. And now you're looking back, I'm like, fuck. And you, you know me, I'm, I'm a crazy motherfucker. I believe everything's a conspiracy theory. I believe everything is a conspiracy. <laughs> and uh, so I'm crazy. So, um, you know, what I think now is like, pfft. I used to think that, you know, with the PMRC, remember the PMRC, they're, they're like a group of old white ladies that are trying to suppress music and try to put the, um, warning labels on albums. I used to think as a kid that uh, the white people, the elite at the very top, wanted to keep us from doing bad things, wanted to keep us from... Uh, exploiting our, our vices. I, I really thought they were, and you know, I'm a kid. I'm like, fuck, I'll listen to any music I want. I'll listen to Slayer and Metallica. They're trying to tell me not to listen to it. You know, this is bullshit. Don't worry about what, you know, what we listen to. Why are you so concerned with it? I really thought that that was the plan. They were trying to keep us good and trying to keep the family tight. But now, as crazy as I am, I totally, I think it's the opposite. I think they're pretending they were trying to keep a tight family unit. I think now they're doing everything they can. All these operations going on to break, to divide us, break up the family in any way possible, and and uh, as many ways as possible. I think at the very, at the highest level, when they're when you look at privatized prisons, you look at hip hop, and then you look at privatized prisons, even like metal. Look what they're doing to the kids. They're making the kids really uh, look up to people promoting violence. And remember, I'm a kid, I'm growing up, I'm, I, I hated the PMRC, I hated the, the labels, but it was, to me, it was a trick. They're pretending they care. Just like, think about this, they were pretending they were fighting the war on drugs, right? They were pretending. They were bringing the drugs in. They were bringing the drugs in. And they're all like, dare to keep kids off drugs, a war on drugs, all this money came in, tax money, to fight the war on drugs. They're bringing it in? They're bringing it in? And there's a, now there's war on terrorism. 
There's all there's a there's a fucking war on terrorism. They're funding it and creating it. Fuck. Same thing with music. It looks like they're trying to fight it and hide it, you know, or 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 uh, keep it at bay. Mm-mm. They like that shit. They want fucked up families. They're trying to split up the families. They want that shit. They want they want us corruptible. They want to be able to corrupt us. Everyone that you know, they can corrupt anybody. They can blackmail anybody. They like that shit. That's how crazy I am. That they want us to listen to this bullshit ass music. They want that shit. They never try to stop Slayer. Slayer was I was a huge Slayer fan. They weren't trying to stop Slayer ever. And I I wondered they were trying to stop accused on 2020. They had a um, a show trying to stop. Uh, Satanism in uh, music and they had like Twisted Sister and like Judas Priest and all these bands and I'm 15 thinking you guys got your way off how come you're not going after King Diamond how come you're not going after Creator and Destruction and Slayer those guys are literally talking about Satan killing babies and dragging their souls to hell that's what their albums are about every they're not trying to hide that shit how come you're not going after them they never nobody ever touched them they were going after like the straw men like Twisted Sister? Come on. Those guys have nothing to do with Satan. But anyway, so at 15, that's when I started to distrust. Like that was ABC 2020 and they got it all wrong. Who's doing the research? I'm 15 going, wait a minute, you guys have it all wrong. So at that point, I began to distrust what the hell was going on in the media. So um, now, like again, I'm a crazy motherfucker, man. I believe in the, the, the craziest shit. <laughs> I believe that... I believe trends in, in, in all of them, not just hip hip hop is the most obvious one. That's the most obvious. You look at hip hop today, Takashi 69 you look at that shit, what they're promoting. They're promoting, they want, they're, he's always in his Instagram, he always has stacks of cash and he's always like making it rain in every Instagram video. He's just throwing cash around, talking all sorts of shit, the baddest cars, talking shit on, on his watches. Like that's the biggest thing going around right now. And they're pushing the shit out of that. They ain't stopping that. They ain't stop. It's not like the music's that good. He's he's all right. When do but you they're find pushing time to watch shit. this shit? Because I ain't got time to watch <laughs> Instagram. Of this shit. You're not on Instagram? I won't even watch that shit if you paid me. You know their yeah. first movie, <clears throat> Orgasmo? Did you ever see Yeah. That? That was their first movie. The the villain in it, um, I forget what his name was in the movie, but it's like a karate guy and there's like a karate scene. But that guy went to ju- jujitsu with me at John Jock's. We got our black belts. Together. Really? Yeah, his name is David Dunn and he was in the movie. And uh, we were we were pretty good friends. And this is like 1998. He calls me up on Halloween day. It's 1998. He goes, Dude, do you want to go to South Park Halloween party? Oh my God. And I thought, fuck yeah. He goes, dude, they gave me two invites and and he was gonna bring a chick and he had one extra ticket. He goes, it's tonight, but you have to have a costume. And I didn't have a costume ready. So I, so I said, fuck it. I went to um I went to the Halloween store on Hollywood Boulevard, you know, that big Halloween yeah. store. I went in there and my plan was the only thing I could think of is to get a I had a Chinese hat, right? One of them Chinese hats because I went to Coachella and I had that. And I go, you know what? I'll go to this party as a Chinese guy with a machine gun. You know what I'm like? Viet Cong. <laughs> I thought I was going to be. So I went to the, the Halloween store and I couldn't find a machine gun. Turns out they're illegal. You can't have machine gun, like toy machine guns. So, so that fucked up my idea. I'm like, fuck, what could I do now? So I'm like walking around the Halloween store and then I see those Billy Bob fake teeth. You know, like the like yeah. teeth. Yeah. And um, I looked at that and I thought, shit, hmm, maybe I could be a homeless dude. So I, <laughs> I, I got those teeth and then I had this idea, I'm going to be a fucking panhandler, homeless guy. So I had the teeth, fucked up Billy Bob teeth. I went to Pick and Save that was on Vine and, and Sunset. It's gone now. They just knocked right. it down. But there was a Pick and Save there. I went there because I needed a, like, a, like, a, like a Bud Light hat. You know what I mean? I was like, I'm gonna get a. So I found a Coors Ice hat. Oh, so that's I found even better. It. It's like twelve bucks, and I needed to, to make it really dirty. So I, I I scraped it on the ground, got it all dirty. I just wanted to be a panhandler right. with the teeth, with right. a Coors Ice hat, all. And then um, my neighbor, he was a construction worker, he was a plumber, so he had dirty, nasty shirts. So I got one of his fucking hellified stained shirts, and um, put on some dirty jeans, and I had these Reeboks. Uh, from when I used to uh, dye carpet for a living. 
instead of cleaning the carpet, you put dye and it's it's like for people who don't want to buy new carpet, you could dye your fucking carpet. Yeah. It doesn't really work. But I was in the industry and I had Reeboks that had like nine different layers of dye on them. And I took off the I, I took off the the shoestrings. And so I had the and then I got a gigantic crescent wrench and i just put it in my back pocket and were they were gonna come pick me up i'm like fuck i'm a panhandler fuck it i'm like this bum right so i wanted to test it out so they show up they pull up in my parking lot and i told the, i told david i go hey listen i'm gonna come out with my my costume don't tell your girl what's up i'm just gonna try to scare her so they pull up and and, and i walk up and this you know i just went up and started asking for change like right up to the car and she freaked out she, Cause she saw the teeth. You see four teeth, <laughs> and I'm like, I look like a dirty panhandler. So she freaked out, and I thought, okay, cool, this is gonna work. So I go to this fucking party. It's right there at the Coyote Studios next to where the Trader Joe's used yeah. to be on on Santa Monica. Remember the Trader Joe's on Santa Monica and like Gardner? There was Across a Trader the Joe's from your old gym. Exactly, yeah. exactly. where exactly. I tapped Keen Ivory Wayne's. I don't yes. know if you guys know that, but I tapped him. So there's a exactly. So there's a um, the Coyote Studios, there, right? Right. So they had a fucking party, dude. I don't know how much money this this party cost, but these are like four gigantic studios, gigantic, four of them, and each room was one room would just had a hundred couches. You know, and then the next room, but it, it, let me back up a little bit. We show up and I don't know which one is Trey Parker and which one's Matt Stone. Matt, so which one's the one with the Afro? That's, that's <laughs> Matt or Trey? Trey's the blonde haired guy. Okay, so the yeah. blonde haired guy, he's he's in like a Batman, like a superhero outfit. It looks like Batman, but it has E on his chest and he was Captain E. He was Captain E and in his utility belt, dude, he had like fucking... Ten thousand dollars worth of fucking e on his utility. Really? Belt. Yes, right. That's a great party. Oh, dude, it was the greatest party I've ever been to in my motherfucking life. So we show up, and everybody's everyone has you know a superhero outfit, uh, um, Dale Earnhardt outfit. Everyone's got these outfits, and everyone's walking around going, "Cool outfit, cool costume, cool." And then they, when they when they would look at me. They'd be like scared. They didn't say shit to me. They wouldn't. Yeah. They wouldn't even look me in the eye. I'm like, fuck. These guys are really. Everybody was scared of me. They're like, who brought the homeless dude? Who bought? The, who got the homeless dude in here? So instantly, I took like fucking two or three hits of E, dude. I was flying. I had these fake Billy Bob teeth. I had this gigantic crescent wrench, and I'm walking around. Every nobody thinks it's a costume. Nobody thinks, everyone thinks this is fucking crazy. It's like a charity event, like make either, a wish. Either some crazy panhandler or like some crazy uh, um, like handyman on the studios. <sighs> and one room, like I said, <sighs> one gigantic studio was a hundred couches for people to be on E, all fucked up. Another room, another studio was all like, uh, like uh, Arabian type couches with the, you know, I don't even know what the hell you would call it, but they're like, um, the couches on the ground. And they got all these um, like uh, mosquito nets and shit. That's yeah. what they look like. But it looked like a Saudi Arabian or whatever, right? And then another room was a fucking club with a DJ. And on the floor, there was little rooms, little booths, like porta potties, all over the place where you go, you could go make out with chicks in these little porta potty rooms. They weren't porta potties, but, but they, they. This were, is the greatest party yes, ever. Yes, it was the greatest party ever. So there was a club with a DJ with all these porta potties. People were dancing, and then you go to another studio, couches, another studio, couches on the floor where you could lay down. Everyone's all fucked up. Right. It was fucking nuts. It was nuts. So, I'm, walk, small, who, so I'm, I'm walking around scaring everybody. I'm having the time of my life just scared because I'd, I'd go up to everybody and ask them for change. I just wanted to ask them for uh, change. I'd go, you got some 50 cent? And they'd be like, uh, uh, maybe. Let me see. Let me. People were fucking giving me money. You booked it, I man. was having so much fucking fun panhandling, right? Yeah. And then every now and then I'd see this guy. He's like six foot five. He had the fucking Billy Bob teeth too big fucking dude and he had a wife beater and he was walking around scaring people too and we would cross paths and we'd look at each other and we're like are we doing the same shit and then he would be gone and then i'd just be panhandling i was just having the time of my life panhandling. and then i'd see him again and then we'd bump into each other again how much and, money did you make and i'm like and all of a sudden he was fucked up we everybody there was fucked up on ecstasy and our we were fucking fried out of and then all of a sudden we bumped into each other and we just it was like this weird fucking connection we had because we didn't even talk. We didn't have any regular conversations. 
we would just hate each other. You know what I mean? We just hated each other. And I called security over. And he had a Billy Bob teeth. Uh, he had Billy Bob teeth uh, and with a gold tooth. Mine didn't have a gold tooth. His Billy Bob teeth had a gold tooth. So we we would call security. I would call security over and go, well, what's going on? And go, he has my gold tooth. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then, and then, um, and you're just and no, no. This guy said that's right my go to, and I go no, that's my go to, and I pull out, I, I pull out the crescent wrench, and he'd open his mouth, he'd open his mouth, and like like uh, those robots in uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, how they're all fucking, they're all they look like shit. I would just, we would just get into this robot state. We'd bring in the security, and I'd like want my gold tooth, so I'm trying to get my gold tooth back from him. And he's like this, and I'm like that. And the security, what time is it? the security, it's like it's. It's all night. How many we, hits of E are we, you on at this point? Like five. <laughs> we kept doing this all night to security. I kept calling security. And I kept set, I kept asking them to get my gold tooth from this motherfucker. And um, eventually, the security threatened to kick us out if we just kept if we kept fucking around. He like, he, it's like okay, the joke's over. Yes, yes. So then we went to the dance floor. We went to the regular club. You and your new buddy. We walk in. You going to take a piss? No. We we walk in. To the club and everyone's dancing and me and him we look scary as fuck so we look like gangsters and we're just we are loving scaring people it was we're having the greatest time scaring the fuck out of these people so when we walk on the dance floor everybody clears out everyone's dancing having a good time and then everybody clears out and we're walking around like we're gonna fuck some people up and at, at the height of their fear all of a sudden we start dancing like we're gay you are we start so dancing like hilarious. we're gay on each other and people going what the fuck is going on and then we would stop and then we would mad dog everybody and walk around and just look at people and just scare them and then be like oh fuck these are white people from fucking like actors and shit like that in the industry scared as fuck of us we look scary and then the, at the height of that fear boom we just start dancing like we're gay on each other it's like we're in west hollywood on, in mickey's and we just we're dancing we're just trying to mind fuck these people you and are then, so funny and then we would stop and then get gangster on everybody so people didn't know if we were gay or or, or if we're thank you for coming to disneyland the other oh dude was, are you uh, kidding that was awesome that man. was surreal because i wanted to, we were going to go to legoland first and uh, my wife called me back. She goes, bro, it's two hours. She's going to puke 18 times. Yeah. Why don't we just pull the fucking trigger and go to Disneyland? And I was like, let's do it. So look up, you know, whatever. And she came back and she goes, I don't even want to tell you. Well, let's go. And uh, my wife called your wife and I'm happy that uh, the kids had a great time. Well, the thing that was special about this is... Uh, we didn't have to wait in any goddamn lines, man. No. You got that. You got that Jennifer Lopez we ticket. Like you know, <laughs> I can't go back to Disneyland any other way now. No. I can't do it. I got used no. to it. I got spoiled. No, that's Being it. able, having a guide mm, walk no. you to any ride you want, because that fast pass shit, that shit don't work. Shit you don't buy work. fast pass and you, you check the app and like nothing's available. That's some bullshit. That's a rip off. And well, I don't want to say a rip off. I don't want to say bullshit. I'm just. It's not what I expected. I take that back. I don't want to get sued. Well, I take that back. What the fuck happened the other day? You didn't. I haven't talked okay, to you really so about it. We get up, you know, whatever. We all meet at nine. We're gonna get the, the tour guide to whatever. I think we got high, right? Did we get high upstairs? We <laughs> no, I didn't. I no, smoked. I didn't. No, <laughs> I had an edible in my pocket. I had a fucking tushy, a, t a TKO edible in my pocket, and I'm like, it's Disneyland. What? What? You know, what's the big fucking deal? So as I walk in, they got metal detectors. And me being the asshole that I am, I took that tushy out of my pocket. Oh, no. Nine out of ten, I leave that shit in my pocket. Yeah. It's not going to ring. And if it does ring, oh, well. Then you go, oh, it's this breath mint or whatever. And they look at it and they let you go. Yeah. I took it out of my pocket and this chick's like, oh, you can't go in with that. You have to bring that back to your room. I'm like, okay, no problem. I go, honey, and you're right there. And Drake was right there. And my wife and my daughter are right there. And I go... Let me go back to the room and put this. Now, my idea wasn't, I wasn't going to go back to the room. I was going to go to the hallway in the hotel, eat a piece, and come back. And that's exactly what I did. I went to the hallway, and I ate a piece, and I threw the other piece away. I ate 100 milligrams. That's all I needed. I didn't want fucking a ton of anxiety in this park. I just wanted something to get me in the park and to get me wiggling. You know what I'm saying? Like, just to get me wiggling. I fucking eat it. I walk back up. I go up to the girl, and she goes, well, we had somebody follow you. You didn't go. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was the creepiest thing ever. That you want to piss me off? 
You want to piss me off? Pull some police shit on me or fucking uh, question me or fucking tell me what to do. Like, that shit drives me crazy. <laughs> All that shit drives me crazy. And when you pull that police, that amateur police shit on me, that really <laughs> pisses me the fuck off. <laughs> You you really want to piss me off? Pull that, that amateur shit on me, like. So she starts <laughs> telling me that I didn't throw it away, and uh, and I'm like, listen, I threw it away, and I go, listen, let's cut this shit. If you don't want me in here, since you threw him up, because I got pissed, I go, since you put fucking the inspector on me, let's go. Inspector. We spent a lot of money for this. We don't need this shit. I'll cancel it right now. And she's like, well, I didn't say that. I go, no, no, that's what you're saying. I go, number two. I go, you know what? Between you and I. You don't get paid enough. You don't get paid enough to give a fuck about this shit. This is an easy job that you're just creating heat for yourself. And I would never say that to somebody, but I'm sick and fucking tired. I'm 55. I hate that fucking amateur cop shit. I always have. You're an amateur cop. They're giving you eight bucks an hour to be a security guard. That's what you are. Take it for granted. You're not going to stop no criminals. You're getting eight bucks an hour. Why are you getting so hee hove about this fucking job? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you ever watch the town when they're gonna rob that bank and Ben Affleck keeps telling him, I don't like that guy. He he buckles his boots up too high. He's a fucking security guard. He's getting six <laughs> bucks an hour, but he thinks he's fucking Rambo. There's those guys out there. I know people who do that job will tell you, rob me. I don't give a fuck. I'm not pulling out my gun for 18 bucks an hour, dog. I'm not pulling it out. I know motherfuckers that have come to me over the years and go, dog, I'm guarding a million bucks on a Tuesday night for fucking 16 an hour. Come hit me in the head with a stick and take that money with 10 gorillas. <laughs> <laughs> but if you really fucking believe that they give a fuck about you and they really they don't give a fuck about you. I mean, that night I went home and on TV there was a thing about Disney. They're not even getting 15 bucks an hour. So this chick is busting my fucking balls about an edible. It's not her park. Who gives a feed? You know what I'm saying? Like, what is wrong with fucking people? And you want me to tell you what really pissed me off? That I'd love to call her a white fuck, but she was Mexican. That's what really pissed me off. She was Mexican trying to act like fucking Mildred. Knock it off. You're not fucking, what's those cops on TV when we were kids on CBS? The two wives. Chips? No, that's the two Mexicans <laughs> with the fucking guy on the motorcycle. That shit pisses me off. Oh but my God. Uh, regardless of that, the security guard came out. They go, we're going to call our boss. The boss came out. And the boss asked what happened. Well, I got a fucked up knee, and I brought that with me. She told me, I don't need somebody following me back. The lady goes, her name is Martha something, and the guy's name is whatever. Do you want to press formal charges? And I go, no, I just want to fucking be left alone. And she put out her hand. You saw me, and I shook her hand, and I left. Wow. That was how fast that went. We didn't do nothing. But let me tell you something. I'm not going to argue with that little chubby Mexican chick. <laughs> Because let me tell you something, those fucking edibles are not good on a ride. Oh, my God. Oh. Ooh. I got a lot of videotape. Oh, uh, I know you do. I'll be with my eyes closed on all of them. People were telling me, you, you should make that a show. Go to all these amusement, amusement parks like uh, Kurt, uh, Bert Kreischer used to do. And just videotape Joey on uh, roller coasters. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good idea. But for this show, you'd have to make him wait in the Let line a little something. bit. It's yeah. fine. Just it's to get fine. him fired up. When you, <laughs> smoke, when you smoke weed and get on a roller coaster, it's one thing. When you do an edible and get on a roller coaster, you start thinking about all the fucking roller coaster accents. <laughs> yeah. Every time you hit and you go up, you're like, I'm flying <laughs> off this fucking building. That's what I'm scared about. Like when we went down, storm, when we went down the last one, what was it? The heavy duty one at the end when you it's all black and shit. Oh, uh, Space Mountain. Space Mountain. We're yeah. down Space Mountain. I was worried about my daughter. If she falls out of that thing, you'll never yeah. see her again. Yeah. It's the buck. That's why it's black. You know how many people have fallen out of that? How many kids? <laughs> how many people have gotten to the bottom? Where's my kid? And all of a sudden they get them and they hold them and they whisk you away in a car and your kid's never seen again. That's yeah. where they fucking take your kids in Disneyland. Yeah. That's where you got to watch your fucking kids. That's who steals your kids. That's a perfect place to be a fucking pedophile. In Disneyland, a white van pulls up. You mean, did, Disney World just got busted. For what? They arrested some employees that um, were up to no good. You didn't hear about that? It was no. all, all over the internet. I don't know the details, though. No, but, I mean, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. See, that's why when I go to those places, you got to definitely watch the kid. But the whole thing I got out of this Thursday uh, that was funny was, Daddy, we're fucking dads. I yeah. knew you when you were a single guy, and you knew me when I was a single guy. Yeah. 
And now we're like these fucking dead. Did you ever think this day was going to happen? Never. Never. Did you think you were going to enjoy it as much as you do? I didn't. I was actually scared that I'd be like my father. I thought, what if it's hereditary? What if I have a kid and I don't give a fuck? I was really worried about that. And then um, I got a bunny. I, I fucking fell in love with this bunny, man. And I treated it like it was my son. It was crazy. And when it died, it fucking crushed me, man. It crushed me. Do you remember Good Time? Do you ever watch Good Times? The TV show. The Good Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like after like three or four seasons, they had to kill the father off. Uh, John Amos killed him off, and it was the season finale when Florida was on the phone and and she gets the call that he's dead. And this is how the season ends. She goes, "Damn, damn!" That's exactly how what I did when my wife called me to tell me the bunny died. I was on the phone. I was like, "Damn!" Screaming. <laughs> I was screaming, man. And at that point, I thought, you know what? I, I need to have kids. I'm 40. It's time to do this. You know what I mean? I'm, it's getting too late. I partied enough. I went out. I was single for you know 10 years straight. I got that out. I, mean, I don't miss that at all. You know what I mean? If you have a kid in your early 20s, it's going to be in your head that, fuck, maybe I did this too soon and shit. I could be out partying and losing my life and all that shit. When you have a kid when you're 42... That shit's gone. Like I'm, I don't miss that shit at all. I've done it all. I don't need it. I you know what it, I know what it's like. You don't miss UFCs or going to I, nothing. I, if I never nothing, went, nothing. I never went to a UFC ever it's crazy, again. Nothing. I wouldn't give a shit. I've been it's to so too many. Crazy. It's so crazy. I've been to too many. Some guy came up to me at the airport. Hey, when is your next UFC? I go, bro. I haven't gone. To I'd UFC. rather watch that shit I in my bed on my phone. Go. I can't go. You know I'm scared I mean? half the time to even go anymore. <laughs> Like, I don't go. This was the time I go, and now ISIS shows up and shit. Shoot <laughs> oh motherfuckers in the UFC. I don't need that shit, dog. <laughs> Fuck that. I made my mind up a long time ago. Yeah, like, UFC, oh, UFC gets UFC, uh, it gets nutty. When I mean, like, Joe, I mean, he's he's like John Lennon and shit. He's got to hide from every other If he stops to take one picture, there's he's going to be swarmed. It's gonna, he's going to be caught up for an hour, you know, taking pictures, you know, because Joe doesn't like to turn down pictures, and, you know, it's... um. It's it's crazy. You, you what do you mean the day they bury the devil at sea? That's the day the devil bury the devil at sea. What? <laughs> what is that? Is that Osama bin Laden or is that somebody else? Or are you no, just that's, talking? That's oh, just okay. us talking here. Oh. So yeah, on, if you guys want to be on our level, like take acid and like pause this for half an hour. What's going on, Doug? Nothing. Eddie Brock was in the house, yeah. fresh from fucking jumping jacks and putting videos up and <laughs> burying bolo motherfuckers and shit, <laughs> going viral online. They don't know that you still got it. They think you're over here getting weak in the fucking bush or something like that. They don't know that you're over here getting stronger by the fucking day out of here. They're just learning the rubber guard. You've taken it up to t three fucking levels since then. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> what conspiracy theories do we have to discuss today? Oh, man. Yeah, new ones? Know. Give me Oof. some new ones. <sighs> new ones. You gave me the flat earth. You gave me the Jimmy Hendrix <laughs> throwing his wife off the balcony. Uh, I didn't know. That wasn't me. That may have... No, I think it was you. Somebody told me. It must Jimmy. have been Sam they, Triple. They threw Jimmy. It could have been Sam. Them throwing Jimmy Hendrix's girlfriend off the balcony. I'm just really entertained by following DC and what's going on. I'm super entertained by that. That's that's my real. That's Game of Thrones times a hundred. When you find out how the, what the real Game of Thrones is like, shit, it's fucking fascinating. You know, I'm, I'm down with every day. I spend two hours catching up on what has happened that day in, in part because you're getting from 90 90 percent of what you're getting from the mainstream media is bullshit so where do you where do you read this stuff then you gotta well it's by process of elimination you know like the uh, 90 percent of the mainstream media is uh not the truth so you know if you're searching for the truth i'm i like the truth i don't like being bullshitted i like right. i like knowing how they're f trying to fuck with my brain uh so by process of elimination you know okay you just Turn on CNN and go, okay, this is all bullshit. So let's try to find the truth. It's not that. So um, there's a lot of indep independent media outlets. I like I like listening to X22 Report, SGT Report. Those two right there, they'll give you the good shit right there. It's uh, true reporting all on YouTube. All great stuff, man. X22, that's the best. That's like when um, those shootings happened last week. Uh, they weren't, you know, the people that are following what's going on, uh, 
were uh, expecting it. They're like, oh man, they're gonna, they need something to clog up the news cycles because a lot of shit is going down right now with the D class. Man, people are going down with it. The, between the D class and um, Epstein's Island, man, a lot of people in trouble, big, powerful people. So anytime something like that happens, they always, it wouldn't surprise me if, um, you know, those shootings were, uh, there was more people involved than we're being told because there are multiple witnesses saying there was multiple shooters. And that's pretty common in these cases. Like there's multiple shooters, like people are like, they're saying there was two or three shooters. They keep saying that. But the official story, what you're getting on the mainstream news is that there was one shooter, crazy dude, you know, uh, trying to blame it on Trump. The dude in Dayton, Ohio was a leftist. He was all, all about Elizabeth Warren. They're, they're keeping quiet about that because, you know, everybody wants Trump out. You know, they're trying to bury him. And like, why are they trying to bury him? Why is the why is 90 percent of the bullshit mainstream media trying to bury him? What's really going on? And then you look into it. And that's what that's what the fascinating thing is like, why are they trying to bury Trump? You know, they try to pin him like CNN, try to pin him. They try to turn all Mexicans against Donald Trump by um, you know, Donald Trump was talking about MS-13 and was saying they're animals, they're criminals, we got to get them out. So then CNN goes, look what Trump said about Mexicans. So they cut out the MS-13 part and just said, they're animals, they're criminals, and we got to get them out. What does that tell you? What is that? They're trying to frame him. And then look what happened with uh, Russian collusion. You know what's going down? The D-class is about not only wasn't and isn't tr Trump a Russian spy, is they try to frame him with that. That's what the D-class, that's what they're trying to bury. That's what the, That's why they're clogging the news cycles. It wouldn't surprise me if um, there was, um, you know, like they take a uh, schizophrenic, paranoid, crazy kid and uh, fill him up with all this crazy shit that they need to, need to do to drag him to a certain place, put a gun in his hand, and then have professionals do a bunch of shooting. Professionals get the fuck out of the way, and they just, you know, they got their patsy. That wouldn't shock me. Stuff like that wouldn't shock me. You know, there's, um, you know who William Cooper is? No. William Cooper wrote the book, Behold the Pale Horse, and he was a, a, a work for the Office of Na Navy Intelligence. And um, he figured out, he was a whistleblower, and he figured out a lot of shit. He wrote a, like that book, and he wrote this in the book real quick. This is 1991 he wrote this. Check this out. It's just a little paragraph. The government encouraged the manufacture and importation of military firearms for criminals to use. This is intended to foster a feeling of insecurity which would lead the American people to voluntarily disarm themselves by passing laws against firearms, using drugs and hypnosis on mental patients in a process called Orion. The CIA inoculated uh, the desire in these people to open fire on schools and thus inflame the anti-gun lobby. This plan is well underway and so far is working perfectly. The middle class is begging the government to do away with the Second Amendment. Wrote that in 1991. It's what they do. They get some crazy kid, fill him up with all this propaganda. Anybody they want to blame it on. If they want to blame it on Castro, they can take a crazy guy, make him like a Castro uh, fanatic, get him all crazy. They can't, they can't trust him to kill anybody because he's just crazy. Who knows what he's going to do? They just have to put him in the scene of the crime. They get some professionals, shoot up the place. They're all saying multiple shooters. Witnesses are saying there was multiple shooters. They're dressed in black. They look like professionals. San Bernardino, same thing. They're all, that's what people are saying. I don't know, that's what the witnesses are saying, people that were there. So it wouldn't shock me if uh, those shootings, um, they did happen. People died. People got you know, their lives ripped apart and destroyed. But wouldn't you want to find out who exactly did it? If you found out your one of your like your mom got murdered, and then the cops told you it was it was uh, you know Joe, but then other people kept telling you, dude, it was Lee, it was Lee. <clears throat> Wouldn't you want to find out? Wouldn't you want to find out how it really went down? Instead of going, don't you say the cops said it was Joe? 
Don't disrespect me like that. The cops. And he goes, dude, got to look into Lee, man. So is it, you know what I mean? But people get angry when you're saying, dude, what the official story uh, is saying, man, there's witnesses saying there was multiple shooters. Don't, doesn't that, don't you want to know how it really went down? There's been 240 something shootings, you know. Something's not right. Something's not adding and they, up. And they all, when you look at all I'm those shootings, a, they all happen right at a time where people are going down. Some people are going to testify. All of them. All of them. There's a list. They could, but this is what's supposed to happen. This is supposed. To, this person supposed to testify. Boom, shooting. This person's supposed to testify. Boom, shooting. What they do? They clog. They don't even like you know all this all this gun control talk. It's almost like they don't even care really that much about, you know, passing gun control laws. It's not really about that. It's about arguing about that, taking up your time. Everyone has a certain amount of time to look into shit. So if they make, it seems like they're, um, if, you know, uh, it seems like they, it's sloppy on purpose. So all the conspiracy theorists could talk about it and spend a lot of time making podcasts about it and listen, listen, that's what they want. It's like, talk about it. Yeah, sure. They want gun control and sure. They're going to piggyback on top of that. You know, while we're at it, we might as well add a couple more gun control laws or whatever. But it's not about that. It's about clogging up the news cycle. Think about the shit that's going down right now. The proof that Trump got framed for Russia is coming out. That's coming out. And people are getting busted. They're going down for it. Boom. Shootings happen. Two of them. Clogs up the news cycles. Everyone's talking about gun control, gun rights, and, you know, you know, and, and, you know, while we're on gun rights, you know, there's nobody, nobody that can convince me that it makes sense for me to give up my guns that I have at my house just in case that alarm goes off and someone breaks in. Me and my wife got plans. We got the plan. We talk about it. That alarm goes off. Someone's fucking getting shot, right? So some crazy kid hopped up on pills, goes shoots up a mall. Does it make sense that I give up my guns because he did that? That does not make any sense that I have to give up my guns because there's some crazy people out there shooting people. If you were, I need my guns even more now. So oh, no, there's, no, so there's no you. way anybody will ever convince me that it makes sense for me to give up my guns because some crazy kid shot up a mall. Like, it makes zero sense. How, how does that make any sense? That doesn't make any sense. Now, how would you start? I mean, obviously, all the the gun violence are these fucking rifles, these high-powered rifles with fucking automatic clips and 250 fucking rounds and all this shit. How do we start to put a, to chip away at this? How um, do we I, if, I had a, if I had a bazooka, you wouldn't have to worry about me. It's like, uh, you know, 80,000 pe 80, people, 80,000, 90,000 people a year die from car accidents. How come we're not trying to get rid of cars? And what about the 800,000 kids that go missing every year? No one gives a shit. What about that? What about all the little, all the kids, all the, the kids that are getting raped on that Epstein Island? Where's, where's your hashtag me too right there? Why is it only hashtag me too if it's some fucking out of work aging actress who said that some fucking producer grabbed her tits in 1972? Oh, me too that? Oh, me too that. That's me too that. But what about all these kids? 800,000, that's an FBI statistic. 800,000 to a million kids go missing. And then sure people go, <gasps> they'll fight them. They don't wanna, they, they'll go. But most of those are like the, the dad stealing the kids away and the divorce and all that. I'm like, okay, okay. 800,000, let's just say 750,000 uh, are those cases, are like, you know, uh, a domestic dispute and they steal the kid or whatever. If it was 20,000 kids a year to get kidnapped and nobody gives a fuck, no one's no me too in that shit, no one cares. You know what you, you if you tell them, if you tell them, uh, I bet if you told, I talked, I, I talked about this on Sam's podcast too. I bet if I told you, if we just said, hey, fucking Epstein's murdering puppies on that fucking, oh, all the vegans, they'll go fucking nuts. They're murdering, but we got to save the puppies. We got to save the puppies. But kids, 
Nobody gives a shit about kids. So shut the fuck up about your fucking gun logic and all that shit. You got no logic. You're worried about machine guns? You're worried about machine guns? Come on, man. If you're worried about machine guns, then I need a machine gun. You try, you're trying to take away machine guns? Shit, that means you need machine guns. Listen, Why are you trying to take away machine guns? When I'm walking down the block, I don't know what my statistics are of a car running a red light and hitting me. I know we have a lot of fucking uh, accidents and car accidents and the kids, I don't know what the fuck's going on with kids. I don't know who takes them. They take them to Mexico. I don't fucking know. What I do know is that I got to look at an exit sign now when I sit in the movie theater. I got, if I go to a garlic festival, I got to look around fences and shit to see what's going on with my wife and kid the same way you do. Because when you watch this shit, now we can't go to Walmart. You know, the other guy in Dayton shot people at one in the morning at night when they were in bar hopping. You know, this yeah. concerns me to the point where whatever the fuck it is, something has to be done. I mean... Uh, what about Chicago? Chicago gets that every weekend. No one's doing shit about that. Chicago, Puerto Rico. I mean, listen, it's... it's it's What we're trying to figure out here is how to control. But what what if... What if, there, what if they are uh, being set up by some nefarious group? I think that, listen, the Chicago thing is a fucking street beefs. And some guy gets shot with a twenty two, or some guy's at a bar or something like that. What concerns me is is if you go to Vegas to see Nine Inch Nails with Danny. You believe that if you ban machine guns that that's not going to happen? No, no, no. I think that it'll just it just creates higher demand and people will pay more. Is that, I believe it's not going to change shit. I don't know where it would start. I don't know. I, I I don't know. Look at every day we look. Oh my God! Oh my God! Last night I had to go to Burbank for something. You know how it started? At 7 fucking 30. And I made a right on this fucking street, right by the Nissan place on uh, on fucking Lancashire. Oh, okay. That McDonald's is on the corner and that gas station or AM, PM on the corner there. Right, the Riverside. Riverside, Riverside or whatever. Did you see what it I was at the light and I looked and I saw a six inch rat go from the fucking side of the weeds down to a homeless tent. Ooh. That whole street is filled with homeless people. Right. So on my ride down, you know, you pass CVS and the ha and fucking the black hair cutting place. And I'm sitting there going, where do you start with the homeless people? Where do we start with the guns, Eddie? I don't know if taking away the machine gun's gonna stop shooting. What I'm fucking telling you is, you know where we, we start? We gotta, you know, you we know gotta we keep start? our fucking eyes open. You know where open. we start? How? Uh, by not ignoring the fact that witnesses said there were multiple shooters and get to the bottom of that. Maybe we'll find answers to as how it really starts. So in El Paso, there's witnesses. There multiple, multiple shooters. In many of the, sh the shootings, there's, they, there's witnesses saying there was multiple shooters. The one in Parkland, there's a teacher, a teacher saying, um, I opened the door and then I, there I saw 20 feet away from me. The killer, he was in uh, armored helmet. He looked like a SWAT member shooting. She says this, like, wait a minute. It was a kid that did it. He wasn't a, some big ass dude in SWAT gear. You know, not that the SWAT team did it. I meant like gear, like, you know, he had like he armor, body armor and a helmet and a fucking gun. We need to get to the bottom of that instead of ignoring that. Like, why are we ignoring that? That's the problem. No, always... Why are we ignoring all the, the mental pills that, and, the, and the, the, the crazy pills that all these kids are on? Why are we ignoring that? I'm going to tell you something. And if you remember, this kid from El Paso, the kid from the Garlic Festival, and the kid that shot up the movie theater during Batman or whatever the fuck. <clears throat> Do you remember that fucking police mug shots? They mm -hmm. looked like they were high on something. Yeah. Like fucking gone. Like, yeah. you know, they're saying that this kid in El Paso ain't saying much, that he's just sitting there kind of like in shock, you know, that he doesn't know what happened. Look at the dude from the um, 
the Colorado shooting, the movie theater, the Batman. Right, shooter. that that one. That guy was he was, Yeah, remember his picture? He was yeah. all fucking. But crazy. they they ignore that. They ignore the pharmaceutical side of it. You know, they ignore that. But That's, so who, who they want to go out like? Maybe that'll make a difference. Is if it, we attack that? Taking away guns, like, ain't gonna make a difference. But is it's it the government be, behind it, or is it like? That's some, the question. That's the question. That's what we need to look into. What what is going on here? What's like, going on? Why are coincidentally these shootings happening when big shit is about to pop in the government? We need to look into that. Like a like a, det- a detective would look into that. What Not a detective happening? wouldn't just say, "Okay, case solved. It's over." What was what was happening when Vegas went down? Um, there was a big trial going on. And he's got all this shit in his phone. That's why I love <laughs> So, like, he- here's my question for you guys. Because I, I'm a little bit more on the liberal side with guns. I, I, I've never had guns. Like, I don't really want one. But I spent six months in Israel where at every mall, every McDonald's, everything, they have army with metal detectors. Because we probably can't get rid of guns. But do you, do you think people would be okay with that, with having metal detectors and having retired um, army people everywhere? Like I, um, October 2nd, 2017, the Benghazi mastermind Abu... Katala goes on trial that same night the Las Vegas massacre happened. I don't know. Maybe it was a coincidence. I mean, I can go on. There's a whole list of all the shootings and what happened. Like, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's not true, but I don't know. There's like the Vegas shooting. There's a lot of like weird shit about that. (laughs) No one's talking about it no more. It's gone. They just, it's gone. Let that go. Why? Look at all the people that died. Why are they letting that go? 58 people. Why are they letting that go? Why are they bury that? And like I said, I'm not here yeah. trivializing it or making fun. or. I'm just saying action. we got to look into I wanna know what really went down. Who who was really behind I want to know killing. what really went down and how to stop this. You have a child. Yeah. I have a child. Someday Lee's going to be married and have a child. People who listen to the show have a child. Yeah. <clears throat> the last thing you need is to be at a movie theater, a nice yeah. skating rink, yeah. and one of these retards pulls up. With I mean, is it smart to, w- w- I mean, we all want uh, a solution. Wouldn't uh, one of the steps to the solution be like, let's find out what really happened. Why are people saying there were multiple shooters that looked like they were dressed like with body armor? I, that, that's, that's some pretty important shit right there. That's important shit. If there was multiple uh, shooters, that's uh, pretty important. But wouldn't wouldn't Walmart have cameras? Exactly. Let's see that. Oh, Let's yeah. see that. Let's see that. Let's see that. Do you think they'll release it? Do they usually release that stuff? Did they release any of the footage? For, you think uh, no Mandalay idea. Bay has any cameras anywhere? Yeah, they should. In the yeah. rooms, though? Uh, you don't need the cameras in the rooms to figure out what the fuck is going on. Um, except for the rooms, there's cameras everywhere, right? right? Like, wouldn't you be able to see like dudes like lugging all that shit? None of that got released, right? I don't know. Maybe it's illegal to release it. It's gangster shit going on, man. It's gangster shit going on. A lot of people dying, you know, and uh, a lot of clues, a lot of witness testimony being ignored and and covered up and buried. I wonder why. Scary shit. Scary shit. I just want them to stop. I just want, you know, uh, yesterday in New York, a motorcycle backfired on Times Square. And people ran like it was Godzilla. People ran down the street like it was a fucking Godzilla. <laughs> what the fuck are you giggling about? Nobody- <laughs> <laughs> Why did you like him? What did he, he did an error. I knew a second ago, but now it's... <laughs> keep, keep going Went from where you told it. Cause then- okay. <laughs> You know that little forehead you got? 